Now we are going to transition to national security. This conference was really geared around what is happening in Alabama and what is we're preparing for this session. But we have a wonderful presenter. Uh, you, she led us in the pledge this morning, Teresa Hubbard, former Coast Guard commander. She is director of our Student Eagles. She is also um, the chairman for our national security issues in Eagle Forum, and she presents at National Eagle Forum a lot of times. She's going to give us a 10 minute update on what you need to know about the border and some other national security things. So come on up. Okay, so this does not count against me as I set up here. So Correct. one of the things that I do want to say and sneak in while I'm setting up here without it counting against me is that everything that you've heard today is pretty much a national security issue because it's impacting everything from our economy to our families to our children um, to every walk of life that we have. And that is, in my opinion, a national security issue. <laughs> so. I was doing pretty well with this until last night when I started watching the news. <laughs> and realized that I needed to add some things. So I was up uh, pretty late last night, revamping a little bit here and taking out slides because I knew I was completely over, over time. So I you know, national security, we don't need no stinking national security because that's pretty much the way I feel right now when you watch what's going on. Can everybody hear me? Um, so the topics we're gonna discuss are President Joe Biden, the Vice President, just a smidge, and then we're gonna discuss China, and if I have time to finish up with the southern border, the drugs and the illegals that are coming through. So last night when I turned on the TV after I thought I was finished, I'm hearing something about Joe Biden and him being feeble-minded. So you can see the bullets there. I'm not gonna go over the bullets. Those are just something that I threw up there for you all to look at while I'm reading this. But I read on, uh, found an article on Breitbart News. It said the uh, Department of Justice Special Counsel Robert Herr finds that Joe Biden willfully retained classified docu documents but is too mentally feeble to be prosecuted. Herr stated, <laughs> that Biden's significantly limited memory played a part in his decision not to prosecute. He said it would be difficult to convince a jury that they should convict him of a serious felony that requires a mental state of willfulness. His memory seemed to have significant limitations. He did not even remember within several years of when his son Bo died. He kept saying that he died in Iraq, did not remember when his term as vice president started in 2009 and when it ended in 2016. And in fact, at one point he thought it ended in 2013. We don't even get into the sloppy manner in which these documents were found and that he shared classified documents with a ghost writer. Anybody in here that's been in the military knows that if any of them had done even one document, they'd be in jail right now, whether it was 2010, 2015, whenever. Okay. So with the world watching all of this last night, because you can bet China, Russia, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas are all seeing this, um, I'm going to take us into our next um, little one here. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris, I want to say this before I go on, sorry. She is so inept that the one time that I saw her on the world stage in Poland, she's standing there getting ready to talk to reporters and she turned when she was asked the first question, looked at the Polish Prime Minister and said, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And he took over the news conference. That's who's going to take over if they take um, Biden out right now. So China, um, I, I want you to, you know, there's nothing that happens in China that this man does not know about. He's declared himself dictator, whatever, for, for life over there. He has done much to figure out what's going on in the United States. He follows a little book called The Art of War, written by a Chinese general called Sun Tzu, and in there, there's one little line that says, know your enemy. And how is he getting to know his enemy? He's buying farmlands near military installations. He's sending Chinese spy balloons across Alaska, through Canada, across the United States, and this administration is allowing it to happen. Now, not only that, 
is going on. But now, one little thing that is not being talked about, these are Chinese illegal immigrants coming into the country. And no one is talking about these. These are military-aged men. In 2019, there were 260, or 2,060 apprehensions. 2020, there were 1,236 apprehensions. And then in 2021, 323. And we believe that those numbers dropped in 20 and uh, 21 because of the COVID um, epidemic, the lockdowns, and the travel restrictions. But by 2022, we surged back up to 1,970 apprehensions, and in FY23, 24,000. So far since the start of FY24, which started October 1st, October 1st, and October, uh, October and November, 9,000 apprehensions of Chinese nationals coming across the border, which means that they're going to um, surge past the 24,000 this year. So what are they doing? Where are they going? We, we, we really don't know. But this is what Christopher Wray, and he doesn't say much that I agree with, the FBI director has said. But he says, we need to first be clear-eyed about the scope of the Chinese government's ambition. Ambition. China, the Chinese Communist Party, believes that it is a generational fight to surpass our country in economic and technological leadership. And they do that by stealing it. They don't invent it. The second thing the American people need to understand is that China uses a diverse range of sophisticated techniques, everything from cyber intrusions to corrupting trusted insiders. Um, the third thing that the American people need to remember is that China has a fundamentally different system than ours, and it's doing all it can to exploit the openness of ours while taking advantage of their own closed system. So this is what China is doing to us. Now, they are also involved in the drug trade, and I want to go ahead and parallel right into the drug trade on this. And I'm going to run out of time. Y'all need to have a thing. So we're talking about our southern borders here. now. Besides that just being a way cool picture and it being a Coast Guard, this is a young man that jumped from his boat onto a homemade submersible submarine. This is the one day in the life of the Coast Guard. A narco sub with crew of five personnel on board was carrying 17,000 pounds of cocaine with a street value of $232 million. The narcos attempted to sink the vessel upon capture knowing that the Coast Guard um, would save them as the sub sank, but the Coast Guard crew managed to plug the leaks and bring the sub into port. In another bust, they captured 39,000 pounds of cocaine and 933 pounds of marijuana with a total street value of $569 million. The Coast Guard only interdicts about 11% of these submersibles, but this is one thing I want you to think about. If they can build their own submersibles and put these types of drugs in there, what if a terrorist group links up with them and they build a submersible and they bring in a dirty bomb or some sort of EMP type explosive? These drugs here were captured from a multi-agency bust in Delaware. They resulted in two Mexican nationals being arrested. They recovered nine kilograms of heroin, three kilograms of cocaine, 14,000 fake oxycodone pills with fentanyl, and Breitbart News reported that the Secretary of the Navy seized some 51,000 pounds of powdered fentanyl that came from Shanghai, China to be delivered to the Sinola Cartel in Mexico. The powder filled 31,000 bags. All right, 31,000 things. Fentanyl is the leading cause of fatal drug overdoses and is 100 times more potent than morphine. It can now be ordered online on the dark web and sent directly to your home. A $3,000 investment of fentanyl will produce $1.5 million in revenues. One kilo of fentanyl is equivalent to 50 kilos of heroin when compared doses to dosage. There is no growing season for fentanyl like there is for cocaine and opium, so you almost cannot put a dent in the manufacturing and distribution of it. All right, so now we're going to go on into, this is, this here is a smuggling, um, these are all routes that they use not only for the, it used to be just the drugs, but now it's the human trafficking. The human trafficking now for the cartels, far, the costs far exceed what they're making on the, um, on the, uh, dr the drug trade now. Now, these, I know you can't see any of these very well, but I just want you to get a flavor. These are the leftist churches that are taking care, or that are helping these people come across the border, and they're helping them all the way down from South America and other foreign countries, all the way up through the Darien Gap into Mexico. These are people without borders, the centers without borders. 
Um, and now we have, we find out that the Doctors Without Borders, this is a brochure that Doctors of Borders did that tell people what, where their transportation links are, where they can go, what they can do, where to eat, where to stay, the whole nine yards. Doctors Without Borders. Wow. Now these are two other NGOs. One on there, if you look at the top, you can barely see it, but this was a picture of a picture, so I couldn't get it any better, but it says NRC. What did NRC stand for? Well, that is Norwegian Refugee Council. This is a group that is a humanitarian, non-governmental organization that protects the rights of people affected by displacement. So now we have the Norwegians that we know are involved. On the other side is the Panamanian Red Cross. And all of these are routes that show them how to get from the Darien Gap through Panama up into the next countries in Mexico. These are some of the countries that they're coming in from overseas. I'm not going to go into it. You can see by the, the names up there that a lot of them are not friends of ours. These are the sanctuary cities that they go throughout. And there is a plan that's called the Regional Refugee and Migrant Plan in 2024 where they plan, the UN plans to hand out $1.16 billion, much of it our tax dollars, to 17 Latin American countries to the illegal immigrants by giving them debit cards, cash cards, some with cash in the envelopes. There's 248 248 non-GO NGOs that are also helping to bring all these people through. These sanctuary cities are once they come and they get cleared through the border control border patrol, these are the places that they take them in into the interior of the country. It's not just Texas exporting them to cities. The NGOs are doing it as well. The last thing I want to talk about and I'll end it here when I wrote an article in Alabama Eagle, or no, for, Al, uh, for the National Eagle Forum last year, I wrote about the southern border. We had 20,000 missing children. From that time to March of 2023, it was up to 80,000 missing children. And today, as of today, the last number that I've heard is that we have 88,000 missing children. Where do you think they're going? Why don't we just talk to our last speaker? And where are the parents of these children and what is happening to them? Um, I appreciate y'all listening to me. Uh, the vice president and the president do need to be replaced. I don't know what's going to happen over the next 10 months, but it is a complete dereliction of duty of what they're doing to our country. Yeah.